ye shall know them by their fruits. Matthew 7, 16. Five reasons that Calvinism is good for the church. Number one, consistency in the essentials of the Christian faith. You walk into a Calvinist church, you know you're getting a conservative, evangelical, Trinitarian, Bible-believing church, a church that is historically Protestant, that affirms the five solas of the Protestant Reformation, justification by faith alone, salvation by grace alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone, Scripture alone, right? This is our authority. Our ultimate infallible authority is Scripture. We affirm the Scriptures. We're Bible-believing Christians. We're, we're conservative. On the other hand, if you walk into a random church, you can literally get anything from charismania, female so-called pastors, those defending LGBT perversion, liberal Christianity, denying the inerrancy of Scripture, and even denying miracles, uh, even to a cold, from that to a, to a cold legalistic pharisaical church, or even just a typical mini concert church service. You can get anything. You walk into a random church, but if you walk into a Calvinist church, you know what you're going to get. You know you're going to get the gospel. You know you're going to get scripture. You know you're going to get expository preaching, and you're going you're gonna to hear of the Trinity and then repentance and all these things, these wonderful things. With Calvinists, we reject the chaos. We reject the man-centeredness. We reject the prosperity gospel, hypergrace, and many other messed up things. Number two, God-centered, Bible-based worship. Generally, Calvinistic churches, you're going to get uh, a humble, purer form of worship centered on who God is and what he has done. Most Calvinists desire to worship God according to the Bible as much as possible. Worship done on his terms rather than on our own terms. Biblical worship is not according to our inventions and desires. Number three, emphasis on bearing fruit consistent with your profession, right? The, the marks of grace, loving God and neighbor, delighting in Christ, delighting in holiness, striving for holiness, Hebrews 12, keeping the faith until the end, perseverance, patience until the end, the fruit of the Spirit. Good Calvinists are not presumptuous about their salvation, but examine themselves, 2 Corinthians 13.5. Also consider 1 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians 10 verse 12. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed, lest ye uh, he fall. So you consider that verse along with uh, Hebrews 3.12. We are not presumptuous, but examine ourselves, which is the safe way, the safe way. Number four, you will hear the hard truths of Scripture, real preaching instead of fluffy motivational speeches. You'll hear about repentance and hell and Christ being the only way to heaven. You won't, you, 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 you'll hear preachers that are willing to offend people with the truth of what the scriptures really teach. The word of God says this. Why ignore it? Why cast it aside like you're ashamed of the Bible? Number five, you will have a gospel-centered church. There will be conviction, right? My experience is that Calvinistic churches are always very gospel-centered. These are just some of the fruits Calvinism brings. Calvinism destroys the natural self-righteousness that man has. It should humble the church and cut off all pride. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness and sanctification and redemption, that according as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. Amen.